Now well then, I'm going to show you how I make a darning mushroom with a hollow handle that threads in and becomes a needle case as well. I'm turning it from maple and I've got a blank here which is about 80 millimeters in diameter and 35 thick and what I've done I found the center and drawn a circle and I've cut the corners off just to make it a bit easier and what I'm going to do is mount it between centers and I'm going to turn it with a bowl gouge and the reason I'm going to turn it with a bowl gouge is because it's the same orientation as a bowl would be. So therefore what I'm saying is the grain is going this way. So I'll bring the tailstock up, pop it in place, turn the lathe on. The lathe I'm using is a Union Graduate lathe. It dates back to about 1964. It's a good lathe for me. I'm running at about 1330 speed. I'm going to take my glasses off and put a pair of safety glasses on. And we'll start the machine up and turn this to round. I'm working with the tool rest as close as I can. And I'm working with the bevel rubbing. And by that, I mean this is the bevel here. If I can zoom in on that, I'll show you. So, this is the bevel of the tool. And I'm actually running that against the piece of wood. And the reason I'm doing that, it gives you a nice fine finish and it presents the tool at the correct cutting angle. Exactly the same in the other direction. That's round now. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a parting tool and I'm going to put a dovetail tenon on this end and the tenon is to suit the chuck jaws that I'm using. I'm using C jaws and this needs to be about 45 millimeters in diameter so another couple of mil and you'll see I cut to one side just to show me the depth that I've gone to and there we are, that's the first part of this blank sorted out. And so I'm going to take the, the live centre out and I'm going to mount my chuck on the lathe. It's a one way chuck. And wind the jaws up all the while holding the piece of work tight against the jaws. The idea being that when we start the machine up again this will run true. I'll turn it around and just nip it up the other side. And what I do, I just bring up the tailstock a little bit just as a little bit of insurance if you like. We rotate this by hand to make sure it runs and you can see that's running quite true. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take the live centre out and I'm going to replace it with a chuck and 
the drill I'm going to put in there is about 12 millimeters diameter. So I bring the chuck up to place, lock it off, and then wind in. I'm only going in about 12 millimeters to begin with. We pull it out and then with a brush just get rid of any of the shavings there. And what I like to do is just stick a little bit of wax, melt a little bit because it's a bit warm now. And we go in about the same amount again. So we now have a hole which is about 20 millimeters deep which is ideal for what we want. So I brush this off so it's nice and clean ready for next time. Take the chuck out. I'm going to bring the tail stock into play and what we're going to do is just true up the face. So just with a pull cut and a push cut we've only taken about a millimeter off or so and then the next tool I'm going to use is to make a groove at the bottom of the hole we've made and the tool I'm using is this one, this little cutter is going to go in that way and I'm going to pull it into the hole. So it's at the bottom of the hole now. And that will just give my thread chaser somewhere to go. The other thing I want to do is just put a little chamfer on here and that will just give us a bit of a lead in when I come to do the thread chasing. What I'm going to do now is slow the machine down. I don't have a speed readout on here but I'm now down to about 24 hertz. I'm using a 16 TPI thread chaser. And the trick is to bring it out before it touches the bottom and then we need to blow out the hole that we've just made in that manner there. Just make sure the thread's fine. I could just do with cleaning that up a little bit. There's a decent thread in there now. And what I want to do now is face this up because this is now going to be our final finish on this part. And you use whatever method you want. Um, what I'm going to do on here is I'm going to use a big scraper and we just gently scrape across the face. And that gives a nice finish on the chisel there. Move the tool rest out the way and we'll put a bit of abrasive on. Just going into the hole a little bit just to get rid of the, the roughness around the hole. 
Get rid of any dust. There's still a couple of little marks there. Uh, what we can do now is sand with the grain. All the way round. Check it, rotate it just so that you can see it in the light. And that's quite a good finish there. Go so with a bit of paper and a bit of homemade polish. I rub it on with the machine stopped first. And then we start the machine up and give it a polish. And then a mix of beeswax and canuba wax. And I will take the speed up again. And we'll just give this a polish. And that'll be a good finish. So that's the main body of it finished for the moment. There are other steps that we have to do. But we'll come back to those in a minute. Now I'm going to do the handle. So I'm going to take this out. I'm going to take the chuck off. Spur centre back in, and I'm going to put a live centre in in the tail stock. And what I have is another piece of maple for the handle. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. There we go, and. This is about 28 millimetres square and 125 millimetres long. And what I want to do is mark the centre and that's easily done with a pencil. Both ends. So you end up with a square and then what I like to do just to make sure it runs true is in the middle of that square that we've just drawn I'll make a little dip with the braddle Tighten that up, bring the tool rest into place, rotate by hand just to make sure the wood's not knocking against the tool rest. And now on this occasion we can actually use a spindle roughing gouge. This is ground square across as you can see there. So down on the tool rest Bring on the cut and just pull backwards and forwards gently. Not being greedy, don't take too big a bite. And then by running your fingers down you'll be able to feel if it's smooth or not. And at this stage now, using an ordinary parting tool, I'm going to put a little tenon on this end. 
this tenon has to be wider than 10 millimeters because this is going to go in my chuck in my pin jaws nice and parallel so again we'll take this live center out I put another chuck on now with different different jaws in it. There's the pin jaws. Now they're only just touching that tenon and what I do now is bring up the tail stock, I lock it off and then tighten up the chuck and that way when I actually start the machine again that should be running quite true. So we'll start the machine up I can see because this is parallel it's not going to foul the tool rest and you can see that's running quite nicely there. Again with the roughing gouge I can just square that up. Now the next thing I have to do with the verniers I have to measure what this hole is in the lid and it doesn't matter what the measurement is but what I do do then is add on two millimeters because the thread on here um, is about a millimeter deep and so when I start this up There we are. What I'm going to do is put a little chamfer on this end and then with a thin parting tool I'm just going to put a little groove in here and that will allow for the thread chaser to run into it. Then I'm going to slow the machine down again because what we want to do now is cut a thread on here. So again I'm down to about 25 hertz and move the tool rest about 20 millimeters back. This time using the male chaser. We'll stop there and we'll try it. And there you can see we've got a very good thread and you can see that it's tight all the way around there which is quite nice. It's not difficult to wind it on and off. So I'm going to tap the live centre out and we're going to put in a chuck with a drill bit and if we measure this little groove here which is 13 millimeters the drill bit is 8 millimeters which is going to give me at least 3 mil either side of the hole um, so that's going to be quite strong and all you've got to think of is how many darning needles would you expect people to store in there well it's not going to be a vast amount is it so I bring that up lock off the tailstock And what I like to do is wind in about 12 millimeters at a time and then I wind out, clean off the drill bit, give it a wipe with a bit of wax and then we go in again. And out we go again. Clean out the shave ends 
little bit of wax just to grease it. And the other thing we got to think of is how deep we're going to go with this hole. And that's going to be determined by this. 80 or 90 millimetre should be fine. So I'm putting a mark down about 100. And 80 or 90 on the drill bit is just past where the lands and grooves finish. So I'll wind this back in. Hold on to the chuck as you withdraw it and by doing that, that ensures that the chuck stays within the, the Morse taper in the quill. And then wind it out. And you're better off doing it this way rather than trying to drill a huge great hole in one go. Because if you try and do that what happens is the shavings build up and you can actually burst the piece of wood that you're working on. And so patience here is the name of the game. And then like I say a little bit of wax on there. This will be the last hole. There we are. And we pull this out, clean the drill so it's ready for the next time you need to use it. We'll remove the chuck from the machine and put a live sensor back in again. And what I'm going to do here now is we're now running on the center line of that hole. I'm just going to make sure that's running true. Just slightly out, but we managed to sort that out. And then with a fine parting tool, I'm just going to define the end here. That's going to be the extent of my handle. And with a spindle gouge, I want to put a little bead on here. I'm going to zoom in on this as you can see the way the tool goes. So flat on the tool rest and what I'm going to do I'm going to rotate the chisel over one way and rotate it over the other way. But as I do it you'll notice I raise the handle slightly and sweep the handle round. So here we go, rotate Raise and sweep, and the same here. And we just knock these corners off. And then I'm going to make this into a little step. Just there. So that's made a demarcation shoulder. And now what I'm going to do is go over that with a bit of abrasive. Do the shoulder as well. And Put a little bit of polish on. I could do this this time with the machine running. We just polish that because this is going to be tight against the the head of the mushroom. It's easier to polish it now than it will be. Put a little bit of canuba wax on. Polish that. And what I like to do on the thread is just put a little bit of ordinary beeswax on there as well and just give that a little polish and that'll help the thread go on and off quite easily. So we stop the lathe. Take the handle out. We try it. 
that's a nice fit. It's not too tight. Okay, we can do it with fingers. It will get looser, obviously, as it's used. But what I'm doing now is tightening it up because I'm going to remount the head of the mushroom with the handle attached. So we put these jaws back on again. And what I'm going to do is bring the tail stock up into that centre line there where we had it before. And that way when we tighten up, if we've done everything to the best of our ability, when we start the lathe again, this will run fairly true. So again, we rotate to make sure nothing catching. And you can see that's running quite true again. So I'm going to wind the speed up again. This is up to 50 hertz. And with the spindle gauge, well with the parting tool first, I'm just going to get rid of this bit. Because that's waste. And then this is going to be the bottom. So we'll wind that over. Put a nice little curve on there. And then we want to put a little bit of shape on and we can actually do that with the roughing gauge. Bearing in mind we've got an 8mm hole down the middle. So as long as we don't go any less than that. We should be fine. So we put a nice little bit of shape on here. And we'll give that a sand. You can do any fancy designs on the handle you want, but as long as it's comfortable, that's all that matters. And then what I'm going to do here, we'll just put a couple of grooves down and with a wire will just burn a line. You notice I'm not wrapping the wire around my fingers. I've got it on a toggle and I'm holding that between finger and thumb. We've already put a little groove in. Don't touch the wire obviously. And then we'll just sand this off. That's quite nice. And what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm just going to finish this bit now before I remove the last of the wood. You can see we're getting a nice shine here. And again, a little bit of canuba wax with beeswax. Just to impart the last bit of shine on it. Last little bit of projection on the wood. And then we start to part it off. We've come down now, this bit down here is about a millimetre wide. 
and so with a skew chisel nice sharp one we just come in I'll change camera for this So here very gently and that gives a nice finish there. We can move the tail stock out the way. We can just abrade this little end, make sure it's nicely rounded over. Notice I'm using two hands. It's so much easier on the tendons on your wrist. There we go. And then my bit of paper has still got some of the finish on it. We'll wind that on. A little bit of beeswax. Wind this on. So that's the turning of the handle complete. We can take that off for a minute. And we'll take this out for a minute. And then what I have here is an off cut with a thread already on it, but it's the wrong thread. So we'll get rid of that thread and you can do that with a parting tool. I'm just going to take that corner off and then again we set my verniers to the diameter of the thread we can part down to it once more with a fine parting tool Just put a little groove there, that will allow the thread chaser to run into it and we'll bring the speed down again. And with the male chaser we will chase a thread. Should be able to wind that on. That one's actually um, a little bit too small, so we'll, we'll do that again. up for this again.
get rid of that. Get a little shout for there. Put our little run out groove on it. Slow the speed down. Might be a bit big now. What I do need to do is just tight, sharpen this up a little bit. So I just rub it on a diamond stone, just flat. fits quite nicely. I'm just going to take the tops off. Make this a little bit deeper. Okay, that's going to wind on there quite nicely. What I want to do now is measure the depth of that. And the depth of my hole, the hole deeper, which is fine. Now, I'm having trouble gripping this, so what I tend to do is just put on a rubber glove and just wind that up until it's close to the backing piece. And what we're going to do with this now, we're going to cut this around, but I'm going to bring the tool rest up just for a little bit of support. I'm going to use a spindle gouge. Wind the speed up. Speeds up to 50 again. You notice I'm just using my thumb just to guide the chisel round. Want to get rid of this bit. all the way round what we can do is just set up a little target which by that I mean in here which is where our chisel will end up and that will give us a nice thickness you can get rid of some of this off of the backing plate which means we can get right to the bottom sweep it all the way in that was our target there 
turn the chisel round and we just come in just to do a parting cut slowing down in the middle Take a nice fine cut there. You could cut with the edge of your tool. And just take a nice fine scrape. And then we stop and have a look. Okay, there's no obvious torn grain on there. And so what I will do is, with a bit of abrasive, We'll just come in, sand this to a nice shape, or to a nice finish I should say, we've already shaped it. And then a slightly finer finish. Let me just stop and have a look before we apply any finish to it. That's quite nice. We can sand with the grain. Quite nice there and then finally with a drop more polish you can see it makes the grain come up quite nicely make sure we've covered it all start the lathe up bit of friction to polish it and dry it And then again, a little bit of canuba wax. Buff that to a shine. And then I'll have to put my glove on again to be able to get this off. off quite nicely put the handle on and there we have a darning mushroom with a handle take the handle off and it doubles as a needle case I hope you've enjoyed that hope it's some help to you enjoy your turning